but we had some some really cool stuff where they actually set the car on fire while we were in it. So Boris was filming it, and you know, it got really big. And, and we said, but I thought it was just a, you said a little bit of fire like in the front of the car, and you were kind of going to shoot through there. But then they end up setting the whole car on fire. We're like, oh. And you're in it. Oh my God. <laughs> so I felt like I was back in the LA riots again, <laughs> which I was. I mean, I didn't steal anything. I just, I was a you know, sightseer. I was just driving by. He said you were really good at uh, making a family environment on the set and also uh, keeping him from wimping out about doing some of his stunts because he said that you he said you're so always doing all your, your stunts. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think we're like a big support group, and I mean, it's so nice to come back to this kind of family environment because it really is. I mean, we knew so many people from the last movie. So, of course, we already come to a crew that we've worked with before. You know, I mean, all, like, the practical effects guys, all, like, the production and um, the art production, the, the pyro guys, like, the, the zombie makeup team. Like, just a lot of people that we knew. It's the props, I mean, it was... And obviously it's visuals, we've been with the same company with Strex for a long time, so everybody knows everybody on the set, and you just feel like you're kind of coming into such a welcoming environment that it's, it's hard to sort of look at it on a daily basis as work, per se, because in the end you are hanging out with people that are really wonderful and you're having so much fun and either there's some explosion happening somewhere. <laughs> Cars on fire. Yeah, somebody's doing something interesting all the time, you know, so there's always something to see and um, never a dull day, I have to say, that's for sure. You know, I would get a lot of tweets from people going, uh, explaining like, oh, we're doing blah, 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 and I'm about to do a crazy flip or, you know, we're about to explode something and they're like, gosh. And I'm sitting here in the office making <laughs> copies. Like, I want your job. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Do you feel kind of like the leader of this group? Like, people are following your lead? Yeah. Well, you know, I think definitely after so many movies, I, I definitely have a sense of responsibility to my cast and crew in the sense of, like, I've already been through so many of these films that... You know, definitely you want everybody around you to feel good and feel comfortable. Especially, I think there is a danger when you've been working so much with the same people that new people coming in are going to feel awkward because everyone's got their inside jokes and everyone already knows everyone. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone felt accepted and part of the team and nobody felt like out of the loop or, you know, which, like with Boris and I, can be really tough because we are, I mean, like our families get together on the weekends, we do barbecues together, we're like really good friends. Um, so it is tough to be with us on set because after, all, like, after each movie wraps, are you like, oh, thank God, I'm gonna take a big break? Or are you already like, all right, let me to start the next one? Well, no, I mean, after this movie, after a big action film, you're always happy to wrap. And we wrap Christmas Eve, so we were lucky to find any Christmas trees when we got home. <laughs> <laughs> so we had this like little pathetic tree. But anyway, um, it was it was good to wrap up. And this year, I just have taken pretty much the year off because I knew I had to do the press during the summer, and then I wanted to work on music and just do stuff for myself, you know, with my daughter and just be with her and take her to school and pick her up and I already knew I had like personal appearances and award shows and things like that, like that so I kind of went, enough, there's already enough lined up. How, well, how old is your daughter? She's four and a half. So does she, do you watch a lot of like cartoons and I'm assuming you're not watching Resident Evil with her, but. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, I mean, my daughter watches cartoons. Well, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes she'll see, like, the trailers. But she's she's friends with all the zombies anyway. <laughs> so she's like, oh, that's my friend. And then she would ask her dad, like, because she would help, like, put the blood splatters on. They were, like, these stickers. They, they were actually really amazing for, because for the quarter of light, 
we ended up realizing, or the art department ended up realizing that the amount of time it would take not only spray blood then to wipe it off for different and then have to match it would be a nightmare and so they made these amazing and I, I think they need to like market stickers? them stickers <laughs> I saw the scene at WonderCon and it does not look like a sticker right? at all because it's incredible and they're kind of like see-through sheets of red steps so and they come on like a piece of see-through paper and so she was like can I help <laughs> and, she's, and she's like, oh, stickers. <laughs> and so she would, like, peel it off and help them place them. But um, it was it was a crazy set, that set. But so she, her dad would come home and she'd be like, how are the zombies? Are they okay? Is everyone okay? Very cute. Because she would see them, you know, fall down. Yeah. She's like, are they okay? Speaking of corridor of light scene, uh, a lot of those stunts look really difficult. I mean, you're doing, you know, like flips and kicking people while you're flipping. And yeah. did you find any of those stunts particularly difficult, or did you? Are you just so stunts are always tough. I mean, like, I I think I even was tweeting after one of or before one of them, and I remember feeling this nervous like so nervous because I knew there was this big flip that I had to do and, and knock the guys while I'm yeah. in the air and and the set because the way we shot we could only afford to have I think like 15 feet max of the corridor of light and one side was open so we could shoot in profile but then it was designed in a way that you could pretty much shoot from whatever angle and it would look the same, right? So, for that particular stunt, we had to turn, so like, let's say, you know, here's the corridor and we're going up and down. Now we had to turn, so the camera is actually going up and down, and we're turned vertically. Okay, so the stunt guy is at the very edge of the corridor, <laughs> and the other dude's behind me. And I was so nervous. And they laid down mats, and he had his friends behind him. <laughs> but I don't know, there was something that just scared me. I just imagined for maybe that it was real, and that my kid would really affect him. And he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But I got really scared that he was going to go over the edge of the set, you oh. know? And, um, you know, when you finally get to the set and do it, it's so different from rehearsal, because in rehearsal, in a room and you've got your sweats on but now with the costume and then suddenly you're like oh with my armbands they're getting caught in the wires can I take them off I was like well it's gonna cost a lot to put them back in if you take them off in post yeah. like okay because they're making me really nervous I feel like they're catching <laughs> suddenly like all these things come into play that you don't expect, especially when it comes to costume, and our costumes are always crazy, so pay the price. <laughs> so, um, I, I was talking to my um, editor about this, and it, it seems like uh, with like Michonne coming on to The Walking Dead, that badass girls are coming into play in a lot of ways in, in um, movies and television right now. But there seems to be still a stigma. Um, he was talking to some guys on a, a message board, and they said, "Oh, she can't be a badass. She's a girl." Like that's actually still prevalent. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, I don't. I mean, listen. When you start listening to people on message boards, <laughs> you've got to be super careful because, I mean, they could act like they're a hundred thousand, but if there's like eleven of them, you're going to be lucky. Yeah. And these eleven people spend days and give huge essays on why you're, you suck pretty much and why you're the worst thing to ever happen to mankind. <laughs> I've read it before, Paul's read it. I mean, it's hilarious and I would get really upset because I would read these things a lot. <laughs> and then Paul's like, but did you look at the names? Because you'll see them repeating the themselves. same people, and it's it usually is. There's there could be a group of them, but it's usually the same people, pretty much regurgitating the same stuff over and over again. And when you go like a franchise that's done this well, 
female driven you know, it, it's it's a big deal you know it's 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 amazing so it's really hard for me to listen to like the few guys who don't agree or you know this there's never been a better time for women to be in action films I feel you know and um I mean, you can't listen to naysayers. I mean, if I listened to naysayers, I would have wouldn't have done anything except be a model because that's what they told me when I was a kid. You can, you're a model. Why are you acting? Why are you trying to cross over? Why are you trying to do anything? 